Dear viewers, greetings. In this video, we are going to see about the very familiar coliform Escherichia coli. Our first general characteristics of Escherichia coli are E. coli. E. coli is a gram positive bacteria and it is a rod shaped bacteria. It is motile in nature due to its peritrichus flagella and the size of the Escherichia coli is ranging from 1 micrometer to 2 micrometer long and it belongs to the family Enterobacteriaceae. Capsules absent, endospores also absent. The mode of respiration is aerobic respiration or facultative anaerobic respiration. The optimum temperature for the cultivation of Escherichia coli is 37 degrees Celsius and the optimum pH is 6 to 7. And regarding the habitat, the primary habitat of Escherichia coli is in the gastrointestinal tract of humans and many other warm blood animals. It is found in the mucus or the epithelium on the wall of intestine, most commonly found in the colon region of the large intestine. Regarding the discovery, E. coli was discovered by Theodor Escherich, uh, who was the German physician uh, in the year 1885. Theodor Escherich isolated the Escherichia coli from the human colon. Types of Escherichia coli There are eight types of Escherichia coli. They are Enterotoxigenic Escherichia coli or ETEC, Enteropathogenic Escherichia coli or EPEC, Enteroinvasive Escherichia coli or EIEC, Enterohemorrhagic Escherichia coli or EHEC, Entero aggregative Escherichia coli or EAEC, Europathogenic Escherichia coli or UPEC, Verotoxin producing Escherichia coli or VPEC, and finally, Shigotoxin producing Escherichia coli or STEC. Disease transmission of Escherichia coli. E. coli infections are mainly transmitted by ingestion of contaminated food and contaminated water. Virulence factors of Escherichia coli. And the term virulence represents the ability of the microorganisms to cause an infection or disease. And the term virulence was first coined by the scientist Louis Pasteur. And the term virulence factors represents the factors which are responsible for causing an infection in human beings. Uh, Escherichia coli are able to produce nearly seven virulence factors. Among the seven, the first virulence factor is adhesins. Uh, the adhesins includes colonization factor antigen 1, colonization factor antigen 2, and colonization factor antigen 3, type 1 fimbriae, P fimbriae, S fimbriae, intermine or non fimbrial adhesin, and finally EPEC adherence factor. The second virulence factor is Invasins. Uh, there are two invasins. First one is hemolysin. Second one is schedula like invasin for, intracellu for intracellular invasion and spread. The third virulence factor is motility or chemotaxis. And here the flagella is coming under this category. And the bacteria confers motility with the help of the flagella. The fourth virulence factor is toxins. It includes heat label toxin, heat stable toxin, shiga toxin, cytotoxin and finally endotoxin uh, that is lipopolysaccharides. The fifth virulence factor is antiphagocytic surface properties. It includes capsules, K antigens and lipopolysaccharides. And the sixth virulence factor is defense against serum bactericidal reactions. It includes K antigens and lipopolysaccharides. Finally, the seventh virulence factor is defense against immune responses. It includes capsules, K antigens and lipopolysaccharides. The incubation period for the E. coli infection is 3 to 4 days and the infected dose required to cause the infection is fewer than 100 bacteria. 
Next, pathogenesis of Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli normally lives in the intestine of people and animals. Most Escherichia coli are harmless and actually are an important part of the healthy human intestinal tract. However, some Escherichia coli are pathogenic, uh, meaning uh, they can cause illness, either diarrhea or illness outside of the intestinal tract. Pathogenic strains of Escherichia coli are responsible for three types of infection in humans. They are urinary tract infection, neonatal meningitis and intestinal diseases or gastroenteritis. The disease caused by a particular strains of Escherichia coli depends on the distribution and expression of an array of virulence determinants like adhesins, invasins, toxins and the abilities to withstand host defenses. Uh, the Escherichia coli results in three clinical diseases. They are gastroenteritis, urinary tract infection, and central nervous system infection in pregnant women. Uh, the first clinical disease caused by the Escherichia coli is gastroenteritis. The gastroenteritis caused by the enterotoxigenic Escherichia coli mainly affects the small intestine and it results in travelers diarrhea and infant diarrhea with the symptoms of watery diarrhea, vomiting, cramps, nausea and low grade fever. And the gastroenteritis caused by enteropathogenic E. coli or EPEZ affect the small intestine and results in infant diarrhea with symptoms like watery diarrhea, vomiting and non-bloody stools. The gastroenteritis caused by enteroaggregative Escherichia coli or EAEC mainly targets the small intestine and results in travelers diarrhea and infant diarrhea with the symptoms watery diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration and low grade fever. And the gastroenteritis caused by enterohemorrhagic Escherichia coli or EHEC targets the large intestine and results initially a watery diarrhea followed by grossy bloody diarrhea or hemorrhagic qualities with abdominal trams. And finally, the gastroenteritis caused by the enteroinvasive Escherichia coli or EIEC mainly targets the large intestine and results in fever abdominal cramps and watery diarrhea which progress to dysentery with scant and bloody stools. The second clinical disease caused by the Escherichia coli is urinary tract infections. Uh, most gram-negative rods that produce UTIs or urinary tract infections originate in the colon and contaminate the urethra ascends into the bladder and may migrate to the kidney. Uh, most strains of Escherichia coli can produce urinary tract infection. Uh, this disease is more common with certain specific serogroups. Escherichia coli are particularly virulent because of their ability to produce adhesins that binds to the cell linings, the bladder and upper urinary tract and produce hemolysins that lies the erythrocytes and other cell types and leading to the cytokine release and stimulating or stimulation of an inflammatory responses. The third clinical disease caused by the Escherichia coli is central nervous system infection in pregnant women. Escherichia coli causes the majority of central nervous system infection in pregnant women and infants who are younger than one month. Uh, laboratory diagnosis of Escherichia coli. The first diagnostic method is microscopic examination. Under gram staining, Escherichia coli was observed as pink colored gram negative rods. In motility test, the Escherichia coli are highly motile due to the presence of the peritricus flagella. And this image shows the uh, gram negative rods, that is E. coli. And next, colony morphology on culture medium. In nutrient agar, E. coli colonies are large, thick, grayish white, moist smooth, opaque or translucent. In Macon agar, E. coli produces pink colored lactose fermenting colonies 
and use in methylene blue agar or EMB agar. Uh, it is the selective medium for SRHA coli. In eosin methylene blue agar, SRHA coli shows metallic sheen production. And finally, in Salmonella shigella agar, SRHA coli shows pink colonies. And this plate shows the SRHA coli on EMB agar or uh, eosin methylene blue agar, which is widely used selective medium for the cultivation of E. coli. Uh, this plate shows the SRHA coli on Salmula shigella agar and in SSC agar and Salmula shigella agar the SRHA coli was observed as pink colonies. Uh, next biochemical test based identification catalyst test positive, oxidase test negative, urease test negative, indole test positive, methyl red test positive, Vergus perasquare test negative, citrate utilization test negative, triple sugar ion test or TSA agar test shows acid but acid slant and gas production. And this slant shows the uh, TSA results of E. coli. Here the acid but acid slant, no H2S production and the gas production is observed. And next antibiotic therapy. Enteric pathogens are treated symptomatically unless disseminated disease occurs. Antibiotic therapy is guided by in vitro sensitivity test and the E. coli meningitis requires antibiotics such as third generation cephalosporins or cephalioxin. SRHA coli sometimes leads to pneumonia and it requires respiratory support, adequate oxygenation and antibiotics such as third generation cephalosporins or fluoroquinolones. Finally, vaccination and preventive measures. The first preventive measure is appropriate infection control practices are used to reduce the risk of nosocomial infection. For example, restricting use of antibiotics, avoiding unnecessary use of urinary tract catheters. The second preventive measure is maintenance of high hygienic standards to reduce the risk of exposure to the dangerous or pathogenic strains. And final preventive measure is proper cooking of beef products to reduce the risk of SRHA coli infections. Dear viewers, that's all about the coliform bacteria SRHA coli. Thank you for your support. Thank you.